Okay, guys. So today with us we have Yash Thakkar. So he did his internship in E Info Chip. So I will let him introduce himself, and then we'll proceed ahead with the podcast. So okay, Yash, you can introduce yourself. So yeah, myself Yash Thakkar. I did my BTEC from Nirma, and I passed out in just twenty third with the CGPA of seven point six. I was the joint treasurer at RCNI, and sponsorship head at Eco. So yeah, that's it. And I am currently Internet E Info Chips. Design and verification intern. Okay. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So, uh, this is a good introduction. So, uh, today we are here to like uh, solve some of the questions or FAQs of juniors that they have. Or also, when I was junior, I had the same questions. So, we will try to give them some answers so that it would be easier for them to go ahead. The next question is like, uh, like so. Yeah, first, sure. can you describe how your day-to-day -day work looks like in office? Like, what do you do at the info chip? Some, uh, some light on it. So yeah, for the first six months, like we have the training for that uh, particular domain. As I said, as I mentioned that I am currently in the design and verification domain. So yeah, when we go to InfoChip, so basically like college only, there uh, were some lectures at the morning for staff. Mm -hmm. So there were like a uh, lecture of two and a half hours in the first half, like from 10 to 12, 30 p.m. So the professors or we can say the engineers or the senior engineers who have like uh, vast information about that field they come us come to us and they teach like very log system by log and uvm mm -hmm. so in these six months every day there was a lecture of uh, two and a half hours in the first half and after that there are some assignments like which we have to like complete in the given deadline okay. so basically like if they had un uh, make us understand one module so they will give us assignment for the same module in the second half, like we have to complete it. And if not complete, then we have to complete it by the next door. So like we have to at the home also, like we have to get that work completed. So this was the like day to day life. And in between there were a regular, like uh, every two months, there were tests to like uh, check the progress of the interns, like how they are performing. If they are not performing well, then uh, they like have some extra lectures we can say. An extra training okay, okay and basically continuous evolution is uh, like they take and after that there is a one interview after that they convert us to the full time okay okay so okay. every so test and every assignments like has it's some weightage or you can say marks okay okay understood Okay, so now we'll come to some of the myths. Like, uh, as an as I was in college, I thought like, okay, corporate life would be like this. Uh, the work would like look like this and all. Uh, so like, but the reality was something a bit different. So was that the same with you? Like, yeah. did you find some differences of what you expected and what was the reality, or it was like same? Yeah, there was a like vast difference between the reality and what was my expectation. So what I expected, like, yeah, they will like. A lot some work and after like one week like we have to uh, uh reach to the mentor like yes our work is this and we have completed almost this but in the reality is not like that they every like check our status like how much we have progressed and if we are not meeting the deadlines then it is very strict you can say like i was thinking like they will be like soft de deadlines that if it can't be completed in this one week then they will like uh, give one another week so that we can complete it. But in the reality, it is not that they are very hard deadlines. Like if they had given some work, then it has to be completed in that particular time only. Okay. So yeah, there was a vast difference between what we expect and what is the reality. Okay, okay, okay. So also uh... the work like which we do is also very different and it's very hard. Like in the college, in the four years, like whatever we have done, is totally different and what like we are doing in this uh, intensive or you can say full time it's very different like very logical ability is required for the work to be completed there is nothing uh, we can find out on the google or the chat gpt like everybody is like oh. saying that yeah we can have the code from the chat gpt but in the hardware side in the VLC side there is nothing available on the chat gpt so you have to do it by yourself only. and also there will be no one like who will be uh, eager to help you. Like in the college, like we have one group, like if we are not getting something, then we will approach you or some mm -hmm. another scholars. Yeah, they will make us mm -hmm. understand. Yes, this is mm -hmm. what they want to like. But in the corporate life, there is nothing like that. 
no one is like eager to help you like you have to do it by yourself like you can say everybody is selfish in this corporate world yeah, yeah. so uh, my next questions were same like whatever subjects you studied in four years like vlsi or embedded system and what so were they really helpful like whatever you studied or it was in college it was just theory and did it's practical or like how was it was it really helpful the subjects that you studied how, how helpful were they yeah we just can't say that it was not as helpful like dld that digital logic design is the like yeah. main fundamental of this vlsi field like in the interview also they will ask this dld basics only okay. so that dld like which we have done from that anand kumar i guess or yes, morris yes. mano is very important i guess yeah it, it is very helpful like in this uh full-time opportunity also like uh, when they are doing the design of some protocol or some soc so this basics should be clear then and then only like you can go further advanced version so uh, that dld and vlsi are like the basic pillars if you want to go in this hardware side or vlsi field and whatever like we studied is really really helpful like yeah Okay, okay, yeah, because it, I also saw that DLD questions were like in every the round one of interviews, DLD questions were the main things that yeah. could take you further. Yeah, okay. So I would also say, guys, DLD and VLSI are very important subjects, so please focus on it. Okay, so going to next question, uh, when did you start preparing for placements? Like some of students, some of them start very early in second year, some of them start very late. So what would you suggest to your juniors? Like when should they start preparing for placements? Yes, I st started preparing like very late in the third year. I started preparing and also in like around the sixth sem, I started preparing like it, it was very late. So I, I would like recommend the junior juniors to like start preparing in the fifth sem or the fourth sem only whenever the DLD or VLSA subjects come and also to have the power on that very long language. Like, although like uh, it is not uh, useful, like, but uh, they will ask the questions in the interview for the vlog only okay. in the interview the if any vlsi side you are going then the questions will be there from the very log only so Unless this you. language has to be powerful yeah what happened like with us like we started preparing very late so uh, we only just read the frequently asked questions from the very log so we didn't have that grip on that very log which I feel like if I should have that grip, then I can like crack other companies, MNCs as well. Okay. Okay. Understood. So, uh, okay. And what are the resources that you referred? Like were there only college subjects and all, or you went to some other books or other blogs and something. So what are some resources that they can refer? Yeah. For the dialogue, I will recommend that, uh, go on like a Morris Mano, like refer the Morris Mano, like in that uh, it is given in very deep and very good. So, like you can understand the, the language is also very good. So for that very log, you should have that. Then for the DLD, Anand Kumar, I guess we have in our second year, we have referred. So for DLD, you should refer that. And also there is one book, uh, How to Crack VLSI Interview by, by Ram Das. Okay. It is also very helpful. Like in that, it is of 250 pages and almost like 700 to 800 interview questions are there. And all are like very frequently asked. In questions were there from only, there only. So okay, okay. most of the VLSI companies, like there is a repetitive some questions in this that Ram, Ram Das, yeah. How to crack VLSI interview by Ram Das. It is very helpful. Book. Okay, okay. And also so, there is two online sites. There is first one is the VLSI verify and the verification guide. These two sites are also very helpful for, for understanding the very log and also that uh, VLSI interview questions. So okay, if okay. you guys refer this one, like it would be more than enough. Understood. Okay. So, and uh, next question was, uh, does CGPA really matter? Like uh, some of them, like when we were also in college, some seniors told like CGPA won't matter. Or it will matter so you went through all placement process so what is your take like yeah. does it really matter or uh, does uh, they have any added advantage when they convert it to full-time or something like yeah i guess like i would uh, refer that to try to have the cgpa above 7.5 okay like also whenever 
placement started there were some big mnc's like which they required was that minimum 7.5 cgp should be there to have qualify criteria okay. like above 7.5 if you have 8 or 8.5 it really don't matter but try to keep above 7.5 so that you can able to sit in every company like whichever is coming to our campus okay okay so uh, in short they should maintain about 7.5 right yeah because i i've seen some of our friends who did not have a good cgp and they could not sit for the companies and they really regretted it so instead yes. we can yeah we can keep it about 7.5 to remain on safe side okay so yeah and that's branch matter because uh, you are from ec uh, and uh, you said for ec branch okay but uh, if it was software role uh, for suppose for infocheck or other company like this they allow ec students to sit for it Yes, Infojeep allow that the EC students to sit for that interview. You can, I guess, like embedded role. They are requiring the C language only. So, yes, the C language is very powerful in CSE branch, but not in our EC branch. But although that EC people like would able to crack that uh, embedded role as well. Okay. So, okay, so can you take Infojeep's us through? Like, the... Yeah. 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 Yeah, you can say. So in Infojeep, like the branch, like really don't matter. Uh, if you are from EC or CSE, like it would okay. not really matter. Okay. And can you take us through the interview process of Infojeep? How they took you and like, if you can not like not the exact yeah. questions, but just a gist of it. What the rounds were about? Yeah. So basically, there were three rounds. First of all, there was a like basic written exam of one hour. It was conducted on higher clap or some platform, third party platform. So they will conduct in that. And they were like from the DLD basics only. It was like very easy, like uh, not very easy, but yeah. Uh, if you are knowing the some basics of DLD and VLSA, then you can easily like crack it. I was like able to that complete that exam in 35 to 40 minutes, which is of oh. which of consists of 60 MC2 mm -hmm. questions. Okay. And after that, like uh, the uh, ones who are like selected from that, they will have basic first round of interview, technical interview, you can say. In that, uh, I was I asked about like full header, half header, then multiplexer, like what is the use application of the multiplexers and that uh, fall time, uh, rising time. Okay. And I would like suggest one thing, like if you don't know some an answers of that questions, then you can like directly say that I am not doing this one uh, in instead of like uh, giving the vague answers, like mm -hmm. it would have like bad impression in front of that interviewer. So if you don't know any answer, like just say it like, I don't know. I have not studied that. Yeah. So it will have a good impression. So this was about round like first. Yeah. Hmm. Around yeah, round two technical interview, and after that, that if they think like uh, you match that criteria of there, then they will not conduct any other round. Directly, you will be like uh, go into the HR round. But one of my colleague who is also in this ASIC field, so the interview was not uh, satisfied. He was in a dilemma that whether to take or not. So he okay. conducted the one another technical round for that person. It happens like in very less percentage. Like if they think. That you are good or not, if they are confused, then and then only like they will conduct. Rather, like you are directly supposed to go in the third round HR round. In that HR round, basic like family background and CGPA, like why you want to come to Infojeep and basic questions were there. It okay. like lasted for ten to fifteen minutes, and technical round lasted for thirty-five to forty minutes. Okay, okay. understood. And uh, okay, so as I know, you are really active in all the fe college fests and all these things. So do you think uh, that really helps in uh, me as a person or like a resume or something or like does it, does it not help at all? Like what is your take on it? I would say like really it matters. Like they will ask like what are the extracurricular activities like apart from this like uh, it's same like what you else you have done so if you have some certificates or you are active in some clubs then like it would have some benefit if there are two persons like both are having the same 
criteria of eligibility then if you have like some extracurricular activities more then they will prefer you over some another person and if also I'm you sure. don't have then also it not really matters if you have like good in technical then they will hire you for sure okay understand and okay, so coming to the last question, so would you like to give any advice, final advice to the juniors, or if you had make any mistake in four years, you don't want your juniors to repeat? So any any such advice you would like to give? Yeah, I would just uh, want to say that uh, start preparing for the interviews from the now only, as it is like very late, and also try to like if you want to go in the just. Uh, clearer mindset like whether you go want to go in the software side or the hardware side like in the vlsi side just have that clear uh in mindset in so that it will help you like if you will like roam here and there if you are sitting in software companies as well as the hardware companies you have don't have the clarity like where you want to go then decide decide was like crystal clear like i want to go in this vlsi side only so i only like appear for that synopsis then uh that uh, info chips and, and other company check like, which were in the vlsi side only so yeah I, I was clear just have clear mindset and start preparing for the very log and the dld basics like every the interview will consist of these two only if you want to go in the vlsi side yeah, great piece of yes. advice. Really, I was also in my time very confused whether to go to software or hardware. And it really, I wasted my time learning both the things. So if we make it clear which side we want to go, it will really save us a lot of time. Yeah, so yes. that was a really nice advice, Yes. So, okay, uh, thanks, Yes, for uh, coming to this podcast and really helping our juniors. Uh, it was very helpful. Thank you. So, meet. Yeah, thank you, Karnak. Yeah.